Hello and welcome to the Young Folk Knits podcast. This is a special episode all about spring and summer. to this special episode of the Young Folk Knits podcast. If you're new, you are very welcome. My name is Casey and I am the maker here at Young Folk Knits. This is a podcast mainly about knitting. There's also some sewing, maybe some crochet, some embroidery, some beadwork. You never know <laughs> what I'm going to be up to. I live on a small farm in Arkansas with my family where we keep bees and we have chickens and we garden and enjoy living out in the middle of nowhere. Speaking of gardening, it is officially spring. Today is the last day of March and that means here in Arkansas we will soon be having pretty warm and humid weather. And while I love all the fluffy sweaters and big cozy shawls, I really start to gravitate towards light and airy knits and using yarn that instead of 100% wool are blends like bamboo, linen, silk, cotton. So I thought today I'd share with you my top 10 summer knits. Now that is garments, mainly summer tops, but stick around because at the end I've got some bonus, my favorite socks, my favorite summer shawl, and a couple of my favorite sewn summery items. I'll also be announcing the giveaway for the Malvina sweater, which is a pattern by Vare and Rose. A lovely French speaking viewer was able to help me with the pronunciation and um, the T is silent. So I'm glad to know that now. <laughs> Thank you so much Vare and Rose for your donation of this lovely pattern. And I will announce the winner of that at the end. So let's jump right into my top 10 summer knits. is a knit that you would not think of for summer. This is from the pattern by Jacqueline Seaslack, if I'm saying that correctly, and it is the Ursa Minor sweater. Now I heavily modified this and I knit it in linen kestrel in their green, in this greenish, I think it's called turtle, is this colorway. And it's a very open, we knit and I absolutely love to wear this over a camisole or over a dress and it's very breathable. The linen is amazing. So if you'd like to know how I modified it, you can look at my Ravelry project, which I will link in the description box below. I talk all about how I did the sleeves, how I did my sizing. Also, the pattern calls for a bulky weight yarn. However, I used this Aran weight yarn and because of the way the linen grows, it actually ended up being perfect. I used the exact same needle size that the pattern calls for and in the end, I was very, very happy with how it turned out. Something I'd love to pair this with is my estuary skirt. Mine is in a tea rose kind of coppery color. And I think that almost all of my tops I'll show you today go really well with this skirt. So that's a great option also, which we'll talk about sewing later. That's a great sewing pattern to put on your list for this summer as well. All right, and coming in at number nine for me is this camisole number four. 
And this is a pattern by My Favorite Things Knitwear, which I'll link in the description box below. I knit this with uh, Knitting for Olive Pure Silk and I really love it a lot. It's very light. It has a great flowy and breathable feel to it. It has a lot of drape. It grew quite a bit with blocking. So I would recommend making your straps shorter than you intend for them to be because they will grow a few inches with wear and blocking. I like to wear this under a sweater or with a nice shawl wrapped around my neck. So you could use any fingering weight yarn for this camisole. Another great option besides the Knitting for Olive is this Tin Lina, I believe is how you say it. And it is a blend of cotton, viscose, and linen. I really like it a lot. I think it's wonderful option for spring and summer tops. And it is by Sadness Garn. Maybe somebody can tell me the right way to say that. <laughs> I, um, I've been able to order this from motherknitter.com and I'll put that description below. This is a great budget friendly yarn, but also has this beautiful sheen to it. So I don't feel like you're compromising anything by going with a budget friendly option. I love this yarn. Coming in at number eight for me is the Lazy Daisy Crop. This is a pattern by Rachel. Um, on Instagram, her name is Rachel Knits Things. And the Lazy Daisy Crop is a pattern I've had for a few months. I uh, actually got it at the end of the summer last year and I never did get around to making it, but I think it's beautiful. It's a plain camisole with uh, eye cord like straps and then you embroider these sweet little daisies <laughs> all over it. So again, this top calls for a fingering weight yarn, really endless options. I think cottons, linens, silk, any blend of a fingering weight sock yarn would be amazing. I actually have some farmer's daughter fob, farmer don't, eh, some farmer's daughter fibers foxy lady <laughs> yarn which is a silk and wool blend it's a singles that is what i have bought to make the crop in but i think that this tin liner again i have it in this colorway i think that this would make a beautiful color crop with some daisies embroidered in this color so another great option number seven on my list is the camisole number two, which is also by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I've seen quite a few of these and I think it is just a beautiful, classic ribbed camisole. Again, this is in a fingering weight yarn and I think a blend of, of cotton or linen or silk would be beautiful in this. Also, I think a nice lightweight sock fingering yarn would be perfect. Anna from the Brook Willow Knitting Podcast just finished making one and if you'd like to see her version, you can watch her latest episode. I think a great option for that top is the Knitting for Olive cotton yarn. All right, now for number six on my list, the Cumulus Tee. This is a pattern by Petite Knits and it is knit in a light fingering or fingering weight yarn. She knit her sample, I believe, in Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. I think that that is a wonderful choice. You've also got any sock yarn. If you want a light, airy spring and summer knit, I think that a Quince & Co. linen or a Sadness Garn Tin Lina would be great. Any cotton blend yarn, so many choices. And I think that it's a beautiful, staple, classic piece. I love the V-neck detail and also that the sleeves are a bit longer than normal short sleeves. I think that's a really classy cut. All right, number five on my list, the camisole number five. <laughs> this is another pattern by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And it is a ribbed pattern, but it has some beautiful detailing around the neck and the arms. You have this gorgeous double knit around the neckline and you pick up around the armholes and do also another uh, double knit edging. And I think it's just absolutely classy and beautiful. I love the shaping of this. I would love to make another one. I knit mine in the um, Ottoman Indigo Bamboo 
yarn, which I don't believe that she carries anymore because she is no longer dyeing yarn. So any fingering weight yarn would be a great option for this. You've got Knitting for Olives Cotton Merino yarn. Again, any sock yarn would be a great choice. Knitting for Olives Pure Silk. I knit that size XXL. I think that the nice thing about a summery top is that um, if you would like to find some nice budget friendly yarn, you can make a short sleeve tank top for very little cost and I think that's amazing. Also, if you want to splurge on some nice yarn, this is a great project to do it on because you don't need that much and you can have a whole finished garment with much less yarn than you would need, for instance, for a long sleeve full sweater that you would knit for colder months. All right, coming in at number four for me is the Ranunculus. This is my version, which I absolutely love. I knit this out of Little Fox Yarn um, Linea, which is a sport weight yarn, and it has linen and cotton and wool. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what all it has in it. It's got quite a mix. The great thing about the ranunculus pattern is you can basically use any weight yarn, all the way from lace up to worsted. She's recently updated her pattern, I believe. So when I was looking in my library at my patterns, it looked a little bit different than from when I had knitted it. I had knitted it a while back. But there's a wonderful range of sizes, and this is a great stash buster. You can make this with as little as one skein of yarn. It's gonna have a very open weave fabric, but that's really nice in the spring and summertime. I went with a sport weight, so the fabric is a little bit different denser than many of the ones that I have seen, but I think this is great with an oversized flowy look and the options for yarn are endless. All right, number three on my list is the Thea top. This is a tank top that to me is perfection. It's a nice neckline that you can stay cool in, but I don't have to worry about exposing too much. Also has a nice wide strap, but it's still a tank top, so it's nice and cool. The best part, it's worsted weight. So this is a quick knit. Becky from A Hand Knit Letter and I are both planning on knitting this very soon. I'm going to be knitting mine in the Equinox line from Magpie Fibers, and I believe that Becky is gonna be using some Sadness Garn, so I'll get an update on her. But to me, this is just a quintessential summer tank that everyone needs. It would be a wardrobe staple and the outfit combinations are endless. Okay, number two on my list is the Tanya Top by Boyland Networks. I cast this on and it has sadly been languishing with little attention at all. It has a beautiful lacy bottom detail and then plain stockinette stitch. It has some great shaping. The body is very flowy and it has some beautiful short sleeves. I'm knitting mine out of Farmer's Daughter, Fa Farmer's Daughter Fibers Boxy Lady. That's a tongue twister in the color One Stab. And now that it is starting to warm up, I plan on focusing on this a lot more. You can look at the hashtag for this top on Instagram and get some amazing ideas on color and yarn choices. And for my number one pick of summer tops, drum roll please, <laughs> is the Anchor Summer Shirt by Petite Knit. I think this is a beautiful, classy, stunning top. Best part, it is knit in DK weight yarn, so it will go quickly. It has this beautiful detailing at the top, and then it has a classic fit with ribbing at the bottom and nice sleek sleeves. To me, this is the epitome of classy knitwear worn lounging by the pool on a European tour abroad. I actually really love this. I have not cast this on yet, but it is top of my list. I think it's beautiful. And again, there are projects after projects on Ravelry and Instagram, so you can get some great ideas for color choices and yarn choices. So that was my top 10, but I have a bonus one for you. I didn't include this in my top 10 because I don't feel it's size inclusive and I don't like that fact, <laughs> but um, it only comes in size, two sizes, a small, medium, and a large. This is the leaf top. Um, I am currently working on, I've got the 
left front side done. And so I'm about to cast on the right front side and then I'll do the back. I am knitting this in the We Are Knitters cotton yarn, the cotton. So this is 100% in the cotton. And I'm actually gonna modify this a bit. I've already started to modify it by adding an extra repeat. You're supposed to do four, uh, you're supposed to do three repeats total of the lace pattern and I did four instead. I'll continue to do four extra repeats on the other side and on the back so that you'll then seam it together. And I think that I'm going to add a small section of stockinette between the back and the two front sides to seam it together. Then I'll have these beautiful wooden buttons that I can't wait to sew on the front. So this is working out very quickly. It's knit on five millimeter needles or US eight. And I really love seeing the lace pattern emerge. I did the whole left front in one afternoon. So hopefully I'll be able to move through it quickly. All right, so some people just aren't garment knitters and that's all right. That's why we have socks. <laughs> socks in general are a great summer knit. They're small projects, they're light, they're not heavy. And these are the Flower Crown Socks by Larkspur Knits. I think that they are a perfect summer sock. I'd also like to recommend a sewing pattern. I already mentioned the estuary skirt, which is a wardrobe staple with many of my knits. A wonderful spring and summer sewing project is the Strata Top by Sew Liberated. It's very simple, quick sew. It has a really cute hemline and easy short sleeves. And for my number one summer and spring shawl pattern, I wanted to recommend the Esconda shawl. This is a free pattern that you can find on Ravelry and it is designed by Belling Fernandez. I'm not sure if that's the correct way to say it. It's a beautiful garter shawl with a lovely lace edging. So it's a free pattern. You can grab a yarn from Stash or you can splurge on a new skein for this beautiful shawl. It is light and small and perfect for spring and summer days. So what if you're not into knitting or crocheting or sewing, but you still wanna do something crafty this summer? That's okay. Something that has zero wool whatsoever <laughs> is embroidery. And I highly recommend one of these embroidery kits from Harvest Goods Co. She has beautiful patterns. You can download PDF patterns or you can order an entire kit, which comes with everything that you need to complete a project. And I think this is a great summertime craft. So that's all I have on pattern recommendations, but I wanted to just quickly run through a few different yarns, which I think are wonderful blends to use for spring and summertime knits. I've already been talking about Knitting for Olive, but they have some great fingering weight choices. Number one, they're Knitting for Olive Pure Silk and also their Cotton Merino, both wonderful yarns. Another great place to buy non-wool blend yarns is Knit Picks. They have a large range starting with fingering weight yarns like their gloss fingering, which is a wool and silk blend. They also have a cotton, their cotton, which is a DK weight cotton and linen blend. They have their dishy, which is a worsted weight and it is a cotton yarn. And then another great fingering weight yarn is their Lindy chain, which is 70% linen and 30% cotton. Quince & Co has a large range of linen yarns in many different weights. You can check out all of those options on their website. Sadness Garn has both a fingering weight tin line and then just their worsted weight line, which I mentioned earlier is a blend of cotton, viscose, and linen. And I think this is great for summertime. It's also a budget-friendly option. If I was going to pick a yarn to splurge on for a summertime knit, it would be their Farmer's Daughter Fibers Foxy Lady. It's a beautiful blend of wool and silk in a singles base, and the shine is absolutely beautiful. It's very light, it has amazing drape, 
and I think it's worth trying out for a special piece that you'd like to make. Well, thank you all so much for joining me. I want to announce the winner of the giveaway from last week. I used a random comment picker and the winner is Raquel Downs. I'll put your name on the screen. If you would either contact me through direct messaging on Instagram or send me an email at youngfolk.nits at gmail.com. If you didn't win, I'm so sorry, but I have some really good news. The designer of this pattern very generously offered all of my followers a discount on her pattern for 20% off the Malvina sweater. So if you didn't win, you can still get it at a great price. Simply use the code YOUNGFOLK at checkout on either Ravelry or Etsy. I think this is such a great pattern that I'm definitely planning on making. If you make it, then please tag me so I can see your projects. Next week is back to regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> Becky will be with me. Thank you all so much for joining me and I hope to see you soon. Happy making.